and welcome to another edition of Trail Top TV. Today we've got James from Data Karate in, in the office. James, thanks for coming in. Yeah, my pleasure, absolutely. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, OTB Kit, exactly what it is and its value to the industry. Um, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Data Karate, James. So sure. Give us a sort of overview of what you guys do in the, in the company. Sure. Um, so we're a software company based in Montreal. A um, little bit around two years old, mm. uh, I'd say at this point. Mm. Um, you know, venture capital funded. Yeah. Um, we're not. We don't sell advertising or sell data, but we do sell software to people who sell those things. Yeah. And our primary focus as a company is on building a real-time machine learning system. Okay. Um, and we have a number of customers that use our machine learning platform to optimize um, real-time bidding or RTB. Okay. Um, and we also have customers who use us uh, data management platforms, yeah. for example. We have a very good partnership with BlueKai, yeah. uh, and they use our software to do real-time look-alike modeling of their, of their advertisers' first and third-party data. So you're one of the few pure play technology plays in <laughs> our tech, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's true, actually, we are. Um, okay. And we function very much like a software company, yeah. um, and, and we think of ourselves very much like a software yeah. company. So I think um, definitely, I wouldn't even say that we're trying to be a big technology platform like yeah. some of the others out there. We want to stay very, very focused on the optimization layer. Okay. So let's talk about OTB Kit. Um, this is kind of released a, a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've obviously got some source code out there on the web, but look, just for people who are not, who are not sort of, we don't understand the concept. Just tell us what OTB Kit is, sure, and sort of the value to the ecosystem, why we're seeing this innovation now. Sure. Um, so the history of RTB Kit is kind of interesting. So our very first, we had you know built this machine learning platform, and our very first customer was an ad serving platform yeah. that said, hey, we want to get into the RTB space, um, but we need an optimization system to help us compete with some of the more established players. Uh, they, were, they asked, could we help them with that? And they said, of course, it's a really, really good use case for our machine learning system. And we ended up building um, all of the software required for them to connect to the ad exchange, yep. receive the bid request, all of that. Um, then we decided, well, okay, we've got this software system, and, and it's effectively a full bidder with a very sophisticated optimization system. And did we want to be in the business of licensing bidders or providing bidder as a service or something like that? We decided that we didn't. Um, so we decided, hey, let's open source the mechanical bits or the, the plumbing, if you will, mm. um, required to connect to the ad exchange and filter all the bid requests, and then we'll sell and license the optimization system. Okay. So that was kind of the business model. Okay, let's just map it out here for the okay, folks sure. watching. Sure. So uh, imagine up here you have, um, you know, the ad exchange. Yeah. Um, and over here we could say we have... Um, the RTB kit core. Yeah. Now, and then down here we would have the Datacratic uh, optimization system. Okay. So, RTB kit effectively has um, a few different ways that people can interface with it. Mm. So, there's exchange connectors. Yeah. Um, and it, currently, I believe there are open source connectors for Rubicon project. There's one coming very soon for AppNexus and Google. Um, somebody had built a Facebook exchange connector and released it into the open source oh, really? repository. Okay. So there's more and more being built all the time. Um, one of the really unique things about RTB kit is the notion of the augmenters. Um, so you can actually augment the bid request in real time with pretty much any piece of data you want. And it can be keyed off of anything that's in the bid request. So for example, the bid request comes from the exchange, it's got a user ID on it. You can then augment that bid request with whatever segment information you have available on the user. Um, or based on the IP address, you can augment with whatever location information okay. that you have. So there's a lot of room for innovation there. Um, RTB kit then receives these bid requests, gets them augmented, and then decides, okay, which campaigns are they eligible for? Um, a campaign is kind of thought of as a bidding agent, mm. and our platform, now RTB Kit ships with a uh, one bidding agent, and okay. people are more than welcome to build their own. So okay. there's no obligation to use Datacratic system. Yeah. Um, but our system happens to be very, very good at scaling up to thousands of bidding agents simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. and you can run lots of very sophisticated campaigns. So RTB Kit, now, it's, it's, it's a piece of code, it's a C++ open source, so basically, your developers are in these sophisticated trading companies, which you're going for, obviously, mm -hmm. in European and Germany, for instance. 
they take this and they build their own sort of uh, flavor or their own sort of uh, flavor of, of DSP basically. Yeah, so they can build their own bitter uh, quite easily. They can pick and choose if you know the open source exchange connectors or if there's unique exchanges they want to connect to. Building yeah. their connector is very very easy. Um, the really key piece for a lot of uh, DSPs and ad networks is that they can build their own augmenters. Mm -hmm. So whichever sort of unique data signal they have, yeah. uh, whatever unique approach they have to the business, a lot of that innovation can happen at the augmentation. Okay. Level. They can then, if they choose to work with Datacratic, um, they can use us to manage the bidding agents. And we have uh, a campaign control API in our system. So campaign data um, gets pushed in mm -hmm. through the API. Um, so that's where the notion of budgets and flight dates and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, then on the other side are very sort of open APIs for the data loggers. So you can push that into whatever kind of cube or reporting system or analytic system um, that you want to use. Mm -hmm. So the really unique thing about RTB Kit is, and it is effectively, it's about a million dollars worth of software that we open source. So it's okay. a very, very sophisticated platform. Uh, 65,000 lines of C++ code and, and you know pretty close to five years of uh, five man years of engineering effort mm -hmm. invested in it. But does it have to sit on a on an infrastructure effectively to scale it, the power, et cetera? It does, of course. So you need to host it, um, and it's very flexible as far as where it can be hosted. Um, you can choose to host in your own data centers. You can host on Amazon. You can host on the AppNexus cloud. Um, so depending on what you decide to do for inventory sources um, can sort of dictate where you decide to host RTB kit. So the type of people using this new, uh, this new open, open source bidder uh, technology, I mean, who, who, who are you seeing use it? Is it the agency training tra desk? Or is it more the more sort of sophisticated end of the market who kind of had the off-the-shelf solution but want something a little bit more bespoke? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we haven't really seen too much uptake from the agencies yet because, I mean, you need to be a software engineer yeah. to get RTB kit up and running, just to be really clear. It's, it's not something that you can just sort of download and click the install button. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty sophisticated. Um, so we've seen a lot of ad networks who have you know not entered the RTB game yeah. and they're sort of there thinking well how do I get into RTB I can build my own bidder um, I can use one of the established buy side platforms um, so a lot of ad networks have started to say hey I can use RTB kit and get up and running in a, in a month or mm. so as opposed to taking six or eight months to build something mm. um, we've seen a lot of startups yeah uh, a lot of mobile startups specifically mobile absolutely mobile. yeah mobile yeah, yeah, yeah mobile how do you pronounce it in the Mo UK? Mobile. mobile mobile yeah, okay yeah. Um, so you've seen a lot of mobile uh, startups. Why, 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 why mobile? Mobile DSPs. Well, I think that there's uh, a huge amount of innovation happening in mobile right now. Um, there are tons of new mobile ad exchanges yeah. popping up. Yeah. And so a lot of companies are coming up with really unique ways of aggregating mobile data, and yeah. normalizing it, device IDs, all of this stuff. I'm sure you, yeah. you yeah. are familiar with a lot of these companies. Um, but the commonality to all of that is they all need a bidder that can connect to an ad exchange. Okay. Um, so in, in, in mobile, for example, it's a great way for them to build an augmenter. Um, if, for example, companies that are using IP address to determine where a user is, maybe mm. he's at a sports stadium yeah. or maybe he's at a shopping mall, yeah. all of that can be done through the augmentation process. But well, what about integrations? I mean, like, uh, let's say I, I build something, I, I hire a bunch of developers and they build me a, a bespoke bidder. I wouldn't, in terms of integrations, like, you know, you go uh, double click and app nexus. How does that all work? I mean, are you already do you have to agree a seat with these guys, or are you sort of integrate? How does that how does that process work? So, so we're not involved in that process at all. So, absolutely, anyone who decides to build a bidder on RTB Kit still has to have a business relationship with all of their exchange yeah. and supply side partners. Um, and so, we don't. You know, RTB Kit is 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 available on GitHub. It's available under a very liberal open source license, the Apache license. Mm. Um, so we don't really get involved in that at all. Our, our, our strategy as a business is for a certain, you know, hopefully a lot of, a large percentage, but at least a certain percentage of people who build bidders on RTB kit to plug into our optimization system, right. which we then license to them. But um, is it still, if they use this RTB kit, is there still a waiting time to get integrated with these exchanges or? Well, the, the waiting time is dramatically reduced. Right. Um, because the connectors themselves are open source, okay. um, they're already up to spec with the supply side API, mm. um, and so it's very very fast for somebody to you know get their get their bidder up and running on yeah. RTB Kit, and then just start calling up the exchanges and forming business relationships. So it makes that whole 
uh, it, it takes a lot of the friction out of that process. So, uh, your open source community, um, are they con how many people have you got involved and who's contributed to go? I mean, it's a bit like Linux where you just have people adding lines that's to code right. and then change what you need to make it bespoke. Yeah, that's I mean, right. How, how is that process working at the minute? It's been working really well. We're really surprised. I mean, we've probably had 15 or more people sign the contributor agreements. Right. Um, so we're seeing bug fixes and, and all kinds of enhancements and uh, improvements to the system coming back through pull requests on GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, so RTB kit, for example, has gone from where it was on February 18th when it was launched, um, has made tremendous progress. Um, as a and become a lot more stable as a platform in a very very short amount of time. Yeah. Because of all of these other developers contributing back to it. Yeah. So we really see the opportunity that as more and more people build on RTB Kit, it can almost become a large buy side platform unto itself. For example, you know I keep sort of talking about the data, uh, the augmenters. But if you're a data provider and you build an augmenter into RTB Kit, any bidder or any DSP or any ad network that has built their bidder on RTB Kit then becomes a potential customer for you. Mm. Um, so it's very, very easy for you to then say, hey, I've got my unique signal, I want to sell it to all of the bidders and buyers out there, mm. um, one connection into our TV kit, and you can just start doing business with people. Same with people on the analytics and data visualization yeah. and reporting systems and all of that. So the, I mean, there was there was obviously a group of uh, vendors who were trying to build an open standard, open RTV. Um, is this is this related to this as well? Or? Well, Open RTV is interesting, and it definitely the RTB kit fully supports open, the Open RTB protocols. Um, open RTB is kind of the exchanges getting together and saying, let's have a common bid request format. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for people to connect to the exchanges, yeah. and RTB kit definitely supports that. So there's an open source. Open RTB exchange connector yeah. that any any exchange that supports Open RTB can use that connector yeah. and um, and and the, again it just takes a lot of the friction away from that process. Okay. So Open RTB is absolutely a great initiative and we're very big supporters of it. And the Open RTB community has also come out very strongly in support of RTB Kit itself. Okay. And in terms of the pit, how to use this, I mean, what would your advice be to someone who's kind of looking at? I need a, a new, I need a bespoke solution, whether it's I want to differentiate myself or I have a, a certain verticalization that I want to process. I want to bring certain data. How would they go about actually you know, starting on the road down building this? Sure, I mean, it's quite simple. They just go to GitHub and they download the software. There's an Amazon machine image mm -hmm. um, that's included in RTB Kit, so they can get their test instance up and running right. pretty quickly on Amazon. Yeah. Um, and there's a few exchange connectors that um, there's already a mock exchange connector, so they can start testing bid requests and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, then they can really start to focus on, you know, so the, uh, you know, seventy percent or so of the really hard engineering work required to build a bidder is already done for them. Yeah. Um, then they can start to focus on, well, what's their unique. Uh, data signal yeah. that they want to get in through the augmentation process and what's their unique bidding strategy or bidding logic that they can then build through uh, the bidding agents. Mm. Um, of course, again, they're more than welcome to call it datacratic, but, <laughs> you know, but we try not to be too prescriptive about that. Yeah. We really, we really you know, firmly believe that RTB kit can be a huge, huge boon to the ad tech ecosystem. Mm. And of course, we're more than happy to sell our software to people who use it, yeah. but we also support lots of people who have no intention of using our software yeah. um, because we think it's good for the overall ecosystem. And you're seeing big sort of uh, take up in, in the US and in Europe as well. Absolutely, you? yeah. So we've got, um, we're having our first RTB kit meetup in Berlin on Monday. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, right. And so we rented a little bar in Berlin yeah. and we're going to supply some drinks. And okay. uh, we've got uh, at least 20 or so people confirmed. Awesome. Um, all engineers and developers right. who are coming out. And we're going to have. Various uh, startups, uh, et cetera. Some of them are more pretty established companies right. as well. Right. Um, we've also seen really good uptake in Paris and in yeah. uh, the French market, yeah. um, where I believe real time bidding is just starting to. You know, yeah, starting to take, take hold. Yeah. Um, we've seen companies in Spain mm. um, building on it. We've actually had companies in Japan and China reach out to us as well. Wow. So I'm not surprised, actually. Yeah, uh, we had a whole computer science class from Beijing University um, use RTB Kit as a as a, as a project in, in sort of distributed computing and, and that sort of thing. All of this stuff just makes the whole ecosystem stronger and mm. makes the whole platform stronger mm. and makes it more and more compelling for people to use it. Mm. All right, James, uh, thanks for bringing us through that uh, overview of uh, uh, um, the OTB kit. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, it looks like it's taken off, so uh, looking forward to hearing more. More about big it. things to come. Thanks, James.
Uh, and that was Trade Talk TV. See you next week.